Greetings, and welcome to episode 68. In today's episode, we'll be discussing negative influence and whether or not it's okay to get rid of a negative influence, even if they are a family member. Because I know some people have a problem removing certain people, regardless of how negative they are, if it's a family member. Okay, so if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, negative influence. My take on negative influence is remove any and all negative influences. It doesn't matter what position this person holds in your life. I don't care if it's your mother, your father, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a friend, a stranger. If you can remove this negative influence, remove the negative influence. I would go so far as to say if you have to quit your job, because say, let's say it's your boss, I would go that far because you having peace of mind is far more important. You can find another job. You might not ever find your peace of mind again. Fact. <laughs> and the longer you stay surrounded by negativity or whatever negative influence, the harder it will be for you to find peace of mind or even come to that place where you can move forward now from what I've seen over the years is people will go out of their way to remove a negative person from their life unless it's a family member and I have seen people quit jobs over negative people but the one thing I've never seen is people cutting out family members. Oh, I can't do that, they're family. Oh, I can't do that, they're family. You know what? Family's all well and good, but if it's family that's keeping you trapped or held back or stuck into a belief cycle that's uh, detrimental to your growth, spiritually, mentally, or emotionally, you might want to think about getting past that person or around that person. Leave that person in behind you. Put them in the rearview mirror. You know, it's it's more. It would in the long run, it would be more beneficial to have gotten away from that negative influence than it would be for you to stay surrounded by that negativity. Now, okay, I grant you, it's a family member. So maybe if you are hardcore against shutting family out, well, maybe you just need less of that family member in your life. But, I mean, personal experience has shown me that it doesn't matter if it's a family member. If that person is a negative influence to your life, get rid of them. If their sole purpose, I mean, it might not even be their sole purpose. It could just be that's their personality. They're going to bring you down. Not because their sole mission in life is to bring you down but that's just how they do everybody <clears throat> and I can't do it people that want to play games people that would demand a certain special treatment or whatever I can't do it I can't I can't do it and it's not even so much the special treatment it's more along the lines of how they treat you do they have to belittle you to make themselves better? To drag you down so they can make themselves feel better about themselves? I mean, there's only two reasons to do it. Either you're dragging someone down so you can appear to be better than them, or you're dragging them down because you're lonely down there on your level. There's only two reasons to drag somebody down. Because you don't want them to get far too far ahead of you. The key there is, if they don't want to be behind you, keep going. Don't get dragged down. Keep going. And if they want to get out in front of you, they'll get up off their ass and get out in front of you. And then they won't need to drag you down. They'll just naturally be out ahead of you. But if that's not the case, if they're still trying to drag you down to get what they want, 
I it's I say it's time to cut them loose because your journey is more important than whatever familial bond is there because oh but you got families there if if they loved you they wouldn't be trying to drag you down anyway how many times has this person halted whatever progress you 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 had gained or maintained you're doing good and everything's great and then you talk to this person and they just say something that slaps you down destroys whatever you see as your progress and oh it, it's okay they're family that's not a good enough excuse them being family genetic someone's genetic disposition does not give them permission to ruin your life or even to drag you down to make them feel better so they can feel like they're superior somehow if they want to feel superior they can get up and get out ahead of you and maybe that's the whole point maybe the point isn't that you're supposed to ditch them maybe the point is that you stay in their life but you stand tall and keep walking and if they really want that spot that's just ahead of yours they'll get up and earn it who knows it's I'm not gonna lie the easiest thing you can do in that situation is just cut out all the people that are trying to to drag you down but maybe that's not what you're supposed to do and I'm willing to accept that also but I'm just not willing to put up with it I just I don't have that kind of tolerance anymore because I used to be that person actually honestly I've never been that person I've never been the guy that goes around tearing other people down to make myself feel better or to give myself a boost over them if I have a boost over you in any way shape or form if I have some kind of uh, one step ahead or one step above or whatever it is that is perceived by you and there's nothing I can do about that because I'm not gonna squat down to make you feel better I'm not gonna step back to make you feel better keep up if you wanna get out ahead get out ahead but that'll be based on your perception of it I guarantee you I don't see it that way I don't trip people up to make it easier for me because how does I don't I have never understood how messing up somebody else's journey helps my journey at all only the ego benefits from that and if you're only going around benefiting your ego then your journey's already screwed up and I'm certainly not putting my journey on hold until you figure it out. That's just not going to happen. So, is it okay? There is no written law that states that family members are required to allow other family members to drag them down backwards, dump on them, shit on them, bury them for their own benefit. There's no law that is stated. Well, it's an unspoken rule. Well, you know... There's a lot of unspoken rules that get broken. There just is. It seems more like a tradition. Well, it would seem to me that some traditions need to change. If you can't keep up, then I'm just going to have to keep going. Because I'm not stopping my journey because you can't figure yours out. Because you'd rather cater to your ego. I'm not here to feed your ego, and I'm not going to. You just think you're better than everybody. No, I don't think I'm better than everybody else. And if you've watched my other videos, you know what that statement really means. You just think you're better than everyone else. What they're really saying is, I think you're better than me, and I'm trying to trip you up, and it's not working. They think you're better than them. That's their perception of it. You're not trying to appear or actually be better than them or farther along. That's just the way things work don't have your journey guided derailed stopped destroyed whatever by somebody else's misconception by somebody else's perception of who you are and where they think you're trying to go you're the one driving you're the only one that really knows which way you're going and what you're trying to achieve and for somebody else to stand up and, and give you pointers, remember, those pointers are according to their life and the way they live. And if you don't live that way, all that good advice is pretty much worthless.
really. If you don't live by your ego, if you're not, if you don't go out in the world to get your ego buffed up, then the way they live, the pointers they give you, will do you absolutely no good. If you're living a life of spirit, just trying to, or just just trying to be a good person, and you're just not ego driven, don't take advice from people that are ego driven, because they're going to teach you how to bolster your ego, which in the long run does you absolutely no good. The ego is concerned with one thing: immediate gratification. Everybody knows this. Everybody sees it. The people don't admit it because they want to maintain the level of whatever they're doing and maybe get a little bit further down the road of whatever they're doing. But that's their game. That's what they want to do. And if I have that kind of negative influence in my life, I'm just, I got to keep walking. If you're a family member and you present that type of obstacle, I got to keep walking. And you being a family member makes absolutely no difference to me. None whatsoever. You want to make things up. You want to tell, spread lies about people. To make yourself feel better or look good or so blame is shifted or this or that and the other. Um, you're just making my point of why I don't have certain people in my life. And haven't had certain people in my life for years. Because if that's all you represent to me is more struggle, I got enough struggles. I have enough mundane struggles. I don't need yours also. I have enough people in my life where I don't need anything from anybody. I don't need anything from any one person so badly that I have to have them in my life. That I can't do, go out and either do for myself or ask someone else. You should be very, very careful about the people you let in, especially if you're letting them in to the, the your actual journey. I mean, yeah, sure, keep it, keep it. You know, if you want to maintain that connection, go talk to that person. But if you feel like you can't trust them, with your inner journey, with your inner sanctum, with your deepest innermost secrets, don't share them because a person like that is going to get a hold of those secrets and they're going to twist them up for their own purpose and then shoot them back at you and see what they can get out of it. Because that's all they're concerned with is what they can get out of it. And they'll do everything in their power to drag you back to where you didn't know. Even though you've done the research, they'll try and drag you back to when you didn't know. Or keep you where they're at so they can pretend to be a little bit further than you. And that's all they're doing. Is that's how they make themselves feel better. Instead of putting in the work, they're just riding on past glories or old, in, old, outdated information that's no longer valid. So I don't know what you're going to do, but I would tell you, if I were part of your journey, I would never do anything to trip your journey up, to slow your progress. I may give you some ideas to think about, but if you disregard them, disregard them. That's fine. But before you disregard them, go out and do the research yourself. Because I'm not telling you this so you'll just believe me out of hand. I tell you these things so that you'll think and go maybe see for yourself. Even this right now that I'm talking about. Go see for yourself. Who are the people in your lives that try and keep you held back? And who are the people in your lives that try to propel you forward? Or at least walking at the same pace? Who are these people in your life? Do you know who they are? Because it's really, 
I've found that it's really easy to pick out the ones that are trying to trip you up. Maybe not at first, because they seem they want to they want to know what you know. They want to know what you know, and it's not that I want to know everything he knows, so I'll know it. No, they want to know what you know, so they can use it against you. I want because if I can't use that stuff if he already knows or she already knows about that, so I have to either make some shit up or come up with some stuff that they don't know and use that against them. See, I'm better than you because I knew this. And the one thing I've learned about people that do that, they usually don't know what the hell they're talking about. I remember growing up, <coughs> I used to have friends, one friend in particular, and now that I'm older, I come to find out nobody really even liked this guy. <coughs> None of my friends anyway. And uh, it turns out I taught this person almost everything they knew. But then they turn around and act like they were the one teaching me. And it took pretty much growing up and being not, not anywhere near this person to figure that out. So you never really know the negative influence because if you... <coughs> If you've put someone on a pedestal, they're going to go out of their way to stay on that pedestal just so they can stay up above you or up ahead of you. So you have to be very, 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 very careful. Very careful. Because you could actually be giving the person that's negative, the negative influence in your life, you could be fueling this negative influence on accident. Because you don't know their actual intentions or because you perceive their intentions to be for your best interest when really it's to, it's self-serving for them. It's just they're, everything they're doing, they're doing to have a particular position in your life. And once they realize they no longer have this position in your life, you don't have to get rid of them. They'll leave and they'll go find someone else that they can have that position in their life. Oh yeah, I'll hang out with you if I can be in charge. If I can be the crew leader, I'm good. You can go crew your lead or whatever over there. There's many types of negative influence. There's people that just straight up bring you down to their level because they aren't going to get any further and they know they're not going to get any further. There's people that want to bring you down to their level so they can pretend they're taller than you and further than you for whatever reason there's people that want to bring you down they don't want you to to stop learning they just want to be out in front of you so of course they want you to keep learning because you keep coming back and telling them what you learned and then they pretend like oh yeah I already knew that yeah I've known that for years because I'm out ahead of you <laughs> so I got rid of my friends that do that but I also got rid of my family members that do that also. It may be taboo to do such a thing, but it is by no means illegal. There is no punishment for this. The only thing you lose is that's one less person. If you have some type of emergency, that's one less person to help you. But that kind of person is prone to charge too much for that help. Oh, yeah, sure, they loaned you $200. But see, here's the kicker. You'll pay that $200 back, and they'll spend the rest of your life reminding you about the time they loaned you $200. But they'll leave out the part where you paid them back. I've gotten rid of those kind of people out of my life also. I have no problem loaning people money. No problem at all. I have no problem borrowing money from certain people because I know that once I'm once I'm paid in full, that's the end of it. It won't be in three months time it'll be remember that time I loaned you that money? Because if they were to say that, remember that time I loaned you that money? I'd say, remember that time I paid you fucking back? <laughs> remember that time I this? Oh, look at that. It's time to go. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. <laughs>
<laughs> nobody is that important to my life. Nobody. Nobody. The only person that's that important to my life that I'm obligated to work through certain situations is my wife. And it's like I'm legally bound, literally legally bound to work on these situations. <laughs> we made a verbal contract and a written contract in front of three witnesses and then signed that contract. <laughs> it is legal and binding. The verbal part, because there was a room full of witnesses to have and to hold, richer and poorer, sickness and health, <laughs> through the good times and the bad. That is a verbal agreement, legal and binding, especially if there's witnesses. People forget that. <laughs> uh -huh. So that is the only person I am obligated to put up with those kind of shenanigans, which those aren't really shenanigans. It's more like tomfoolery because shenanigans are fun. Everybody likes shenanigans. When people are trying to bring you down, that's tomfoolery. Nobody likes tomfoolery. Remember that. Keep that in mind. <clears throat> Let's say you, the viewer, you're in my life, and you start doing the thing where, well, oh, well, I already knew that, knowing full well you didn't already know that, trying to stay some uh, somehow, for whatever reason, a step ahead of me or a step above me, I would eventually catch on to that, and I would eventually cut you out of my life. Likewise, I would expect you to do the same damn thing if you caught me doing that to you. But what happens when, when I learn something new, I don't pretend like, oh, yeah, I already knew that. I'll let you know, wow, I, I never, never knew that, or I never thought of it that way. It could be just a new perspective on something you, you already knew. Now, if it's a new perspective on something you already knew, don't just say, wow, I already knew that. Say, you know, acknowledge the fact that they've brought you a new perspective, a new point of view on something you already knew. Because that new point of view, a new perspective, sometimes makes something look brand new. Even if you already know it, it makes it look brand new. It makes it so you can maybe get a little bit further in that particular area. Give it a look. Give the person their credit for giving, bringing that to your attention. Don't just look at them and say, well, I already knew that. Because I guarantee you, you didn't already know that. Because each human being has their own unique perspective and point of view. So how could you have possibly known my unique perspective and point of view before I told it to you? But you're going to sit there and say, I knew that. Because I'm out ahead of you. Sit down, son. <laughs> and this is the main reason why I say the journey is a solitary one. The path is a solitary journey. To, you know, you, you pick up tidbits here and there, but each one of us is almost obligated to walk alone, so we don't pick up people like that who pretend to be teachers, who pretend to be masters, who pretend to be this and pretend to be that, but really all they're trying to do is feed and empower their ego. If you know what I know, and perhaps maybe you don't believe in it, and you come to me and you're seeking to know more, I have a lot more respect for you as a non-believer seeking to acquire more knowledge than I would for someone that's only in this, or in life in general, just to feed their ego and their instant gratification. A lot more respect for a non-believer, because at least they're taking the time to look. They're not just sitting around waiting for someone to tell them new things that they can pretend they already knew. <laughs> I mean, I care what you think. I care about what you've learned to an extent. I mean, for the most part, I don't care because it won't affect me if you don't believe what I have to say. If you don't believe the stories I tell, I've lived it. There's not one thing I would tell you in these videos that I haven't gone out and experienced. The meditation, the, little, the different techniques I have to teach, 
the different techniques I've learned over the years. <clears throat> I wouldn't just regurgitate something I've read or seen somewhere without first trying to incorporate it into my life because I can guarantee you there's a lot of things that I've learned that I was unable to incorporate into my life for whatever reason. Maybe I just I suck at it and just couldn't get it to work. But why would I teach something that, in my experience, doesn't work? It doesn't matter if I'm doing it wrong and it doesn't work because of that. What matters is, according to my point of view, this technique didn't work. So I'm not going to teach that technique because for me it didn't work. So to me, that's like selling you a car that doesn't run. Maybe I didn't know how to turn it on. And maybe one of you does. And maybe one of you will make a video and teach that exact same technique, but in such a fashion that I learn it. Then I might teach it. But as long as I believe it to be a faulty technique or a technique that doesn't work, I'm not going to teach it. But someone that is only in this for how you perceive them. Oh, he's so f much further down the road than me. And yes, that is a negative. If you start perceiving yourself as less than, and you shouldn't be judging yourself or anybody else anyway, if you start perceiving yourself as less than for someone that's not even really in this for the journey, but just for the ego boost that get you, they get from people believing they're f further down the road, then that damages you in some small part. The fact that they're trying to teach you a technique that they don't even use, they don't even believe in, they just heard it somewhere, and because you're all in awe, wow, they're out ahead of you now. That person has now become a negative influence in your life, and no matter how far you get, they'll never let you get so far ahead of them that they can't keep up. And the minute you do, they'll be done with you. That is a negative influence. See, and that one is so subtle, you have to be able to see it, or else it'll, it'll eventually get you. I mean, once this person is out of your life, whether you put them out of your life or they abandon you because they could no longer control you, you'll see that, wow, I could have been so much further down the path, but this person just sucked the life right out of me and I didn't even see it. Nothing truly negative happened to you, but that's still a negative. And yes, you get the learning experience to go along with it, and but it could have been avoided. Just a, a not but by being a little more discerning, not putting them on a pedestal. And I know seekers, all seekers take great delight in meeting other seekers. It's just it's a thing. <laughs> so when a seeker meets another seeker they assume that that seeker is of a like mind and that they're not going to be a liar that they're going to be the genuine article at least that's how I approach it I believe myself to be a genuine seeker I put into practice everything that I've learned everything that I'm able to put into practice like I said there are certain techniques that I couldn't get to work but, when I meet a fellow seeker, I assume that they are at least, and I'm not saying I am at the pinnacle, but at least as genuine as I am. So, I can only assume because I'm assuming that you are a seeker if you're watching this, and I'm assuming that you are at least as genuine as I am if, if you're watching this. So I assume automatically that whoever you meet, you assume the same thing. That the person you have just met is at least as genuine as you are. I would say friend, seeker, family member, stranger, whoever, if a red flag goes up, pay attention to it. Just like if you were dating, if a red flag goes up, call them out on it. This journey, the, the basis of this journey is self-honesty. If you can't call them out on some bullshit, 
then you've you've opened yourself up to that unnecessarily if a red flag goes up call them out on their bullshit if they can't explain it if they have no answer if they if if they get super defensive that's another red flag don't even bother with them anymore and if they're just straight up just tearing you down belittling you for their own benefit Get away from them. It could save your life to get away from that person. Because anyone that makes you feel small or weak is diminishing you as a human being. Not just your spiritual path, but diminishes you as a human being. <clears throat> and I wouldn't wish that on anybody. And I don't care if it is a family member doing it. You need to get yourself free of it. Anyway. We're getting on to the 30 minute mark, so I'm going to go ahead and call it. These these videos lately, I, I could be making part twos to these because I have a lot more to say about it, but 30 minute mark, that's a whole lot of talking, 30 minutes. <laughs> By the time I get to the 30 minute mark, to me, it's like, oh shit, 30 minutes. <laughs> but then when you think about it, man, that's a lot of talking. Anyway, 30 minute mark, made it. <laughs> if you have enjoyed this episode, please click the like button. You can favorite it if you want. Uh, comment down below. As this is a discussion, I want to hear about your journey. That's, 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 that's the whole point of the videos. Is so we can create an impromptu forum, so to speak. And, we can, uh, and the videos will be the topic of discussion. I want to hear about your journey. I want to know about your journey. You don't have to put anything too revealing just have it be about what's in the video I mean if you don't like me for whatever reason post that I mean somebody's already posted that they don't like me they think I'm a Satanist because I was wearing a black shirt with a skull on it and a cross of some sort on, on it and apparently I'm a Satanist because of that and fair enough fair enough uh, but anyway <laughs> If you would like to keep coming back and getting more information, or you just like the sound of my voice, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But until next time, you hang in there. <laughs>